Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy here for your daily dose of the roars on location at American Underground here in Durham, North Carolina. I'm teaching a class for Silicon Dojo tonight, uh, AI computer vision using the Moon Dream model. I do these classes every couple of weeks here in Durham. Um, I'm going to be doing a full day introduction of Python with AI boot camp uh, in January. If you're interested in any of those classes, make sure to take a look at our schedule at silicondojo.com. And with that, Oh, let's, let's talk about things that make you a little bit nervous. Let's talk about things that make you go, oh, Boise. Oh, Boise, this, 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 might, this, this might be bad. Uh, so Anthropic, uh, Anthropic uh, reveals that as few as 250 malicious documents are all it takes to poison an LLM's training data regardless of model size. Uh, so this is kind of interesting, right? See, so we have all of these, uh, these LLMs that have basically been trained off of literally God knows what, right? They've been literally scra scraping Reddit of all things. And so one of the questions uh, with these LLMs then, again, is basically how to compromise them. And until recently, the whole idea with compromising these LLMs is can you get it to misgender somebody, right? Can you get to misgender somebody? Can you get it to give you the, the, the recipe for sarin gas, that type of deal? Which, you know, it is what it is. Whatever. What becomes more interesting now, though, is that we're getting more and more agentic AI. So agentic artificial intelligence is where you're building systems. Those systems are actually going to take actions on your behalf. They will actually schedule an appointment with the barber. You know, you say, hey, uh, hey, AI, I'd like uh, to get a haircut this afternoon. The AI triggers a whole system. It goes to who, who wherever your favorite uh, barber shop is. It finds uh, your favorite barber, it sees if they have any slots this afternoon, and then automatically grabs that slot for you. Or you can say, hey, AI, we're out of milk. And then it'll simply go and buy milk for you, all of those kind of things. And so what becomes interesting now is instead of thinking about the guardrails as you know misgendering or whatever else, one of the guardrails you're breaking is that I don't know, you get, you get 40 things of milk, 40 cartons of milk instead of one carton of milk. What happens if you know, they start booking you up for you know, 50 slots at the barber shop or that kind of thing? It becomes very interesting. Like if you can start confusing the LLM and get the LLM to trigger ev events uh, to occur, uh, you can start getting some bad things happening. So like with some of the LLMs now, right, if you give uh, access uh, to the underlying operating system, to the shell, to the LLM, the LLM can actually trigger events on the shell. So if you can, tr if you, if you can hide uh, malicious documents in the training uh, that you know, these LLMs are going through to be triggered in specific events, it's kind of curious to think about what kind of malicious actions can be taken against the shell of a server or against your computer, all of these other things. The other thing that's very interesting about this too, is that if you think about it, like in the technology world, there are a lot of, of niches, niches, like very, very specific things to do very specific things, right? So, so people might not be thinking about, right? If you're a part of the safety team, you're gonna, you're gonna focus on the big safety issues. But what about all these, these edge cases that are around there? So what if people put malicious documents out there for let's say Python modules that only 5,000 people use? Right. So again, you don't you don't go after you don't go after beautiful soup as a Python module. You don't go after like one of really, really popular Python modules. You put out malicious documents about a Python module, you know, only five or ten thousand people use, but they use it for a very specific type of thing. And so they're using their LLM and they, they type they type in what should be a pretty normal request. Right? If enough documents were able to get poisoned, at that point, maybe that normal request, it triggers the LLM to try to delete your entire hard drive or ex exfiltrate data or that type of thing. So this is where it's gonna be very interesting with uh, agentic artificial intelligence and cybersecurity and how people start building systems to try to prevent this kind of crap from happening. It's kind of, it's kind of curious. Uh, I just went to a meetup here in Research Triangle and there was a guy, what's it called, um, teaming? What's it called? AI, AI pair programming. Anyways, the idea is that the AI is your teammate 
So vibe, vibe coding is kind of like you tell AI to do something. And it's like pair, paired programming is almost like you consider the AI to be your teammate and you're truly, it's supposed to be a partnership. Anyways, one of the interesting things he was talking about is that um, with some of these, uh, with some of these uh, vibe coding platforms out there, that they do get shell access and they, they, can, they can wipe your entire computer. They can wipe your entire computer if you, if you uh, tell it to do something stupid. And one of the interesting things, all right, I, said, I raised my hand, I raised my hand. So this, this, you know, we're at a meetup with 200 people in Research Triangle, prominent folks and all that. So I, I raised my hand, I'm like, hey, so, so how, do, how does Act, you know, is, is there, are there any tools like Active Directory uh, for this vibe coding world, right? So Active Directory is basically a security service in order to prevent people from, from accessing files and accessing USB ports and accessing printers and all that kind of stuff. It's L, I don't know if it's still LDAP. Anyways, it's basically an access control system, right? So, you know, I was asking, it's like, well, is there, is there active directory essentially for this? So you can say what a user has the right to delete folders on a system, but the system doesn't have the right to delete folders on the system. And then I got a very, <laughs> A very unsatisfying answer. I got a very unsatisfying answer. And so I think that's going to be an interesting thing to be thinking about this, right? If you're a CTO, a CIO, if you're a sysadmin, what do you do when, what do you do when it's not your users doing stupid crap? Because you've got to have some trust in your users. Some. A little bit, a tiny bit, tiny bit, right? you got to have some trust in your users. But what happens when your users are using stupid AI that can just run havoc on your systems. Anyways, Claude Creator Anthropic has found that it's actually easier to poison large language models than previously thought. In a recent blog post, Anthropic explains that as few as 250 malicious documents can produce a backdoor vulnerability in a large language model, regardless of model size or training data volume. So the idea is even one of these massive, one of these huge models, you can still poison with 250 documents, which actually makes sense when you think about how this works. Uh, these findings arose from a joint study <clears throat> between Anthropic uh, the Alan Turing Institute and the UK AI Security Institute. It was previously thought that bad actors would need to control a much more significant percentage of any LLM's training data to influence its behavior, but these recent findings suggest it's actually a much easier than that. According to Anthropic, quote, although a 13 billion parameter model is trained on over 20 times more training data than a 600 million uh, model, both can be backdoored by the same small number of poisoned documents. Uh, the aforementioned Anthropic study also focused on quote, a narrow backdoor producing gibberish text that is unlikely to pose significant risks in Frontier, i.e. the most advanced models. However, Anthropic highlights another study where poisoned training data is used to place a backdoor that will swing open to exfiltrate sensitive data from the LLM. All a hacker needed to do in that LLM study was enter a prompt containing the unlocking trigger phrase previously introduced via the poisoned training data. So basically the idea, somebody plugs in a, 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 a phrase that triggers something in the LLM for you know all hell uh, to break loose. And so I think this is gonna be an interesting thing going forward when we start talking about artificial intelligence, and especially as artificial intelligence starts taking actions for people, right? Because that's the thing, like, like if you tell AI to write your term paper and then it screws things up, right? One, dumb on you. Two, who the hell really cares? But what, what happens when the, these LLMs are taking actions? One of the things we've seen is, is LLMs, AI, quote unquote AI, is now being used in cybersecurity in order to interpret uh, things going on with, uh, with log files or whatever else. And so think about like, kind of like the Manchurian Candidate or whatever, like where, where a word or phrase is said and that triggers something in the person that, that's, that, that's been screwed with. Like imagine Imagine, like you think about, okay, I'm gonna put a prompt in, right? I'm going to type in a prompt and that is gonna backdoor the LLM. What if on the other hand, you, tra you train, in the training data, you put something where the trigger is something specific in a log file, right? It, if, if a firewall, so basically you have firewall rules, right? And so the firewall is logging. So it, if, you see you know, something coming in from a specific port that comes from a specific address that is targeting another specific address. 
What if that triggers something within the LLM? Remember, the LLM does not understand English. It doesn't understand English. It doesn't understand Chinese. It doesn't understand anything, right? It is simply a, a statistical model, right? It, it's these tokens, right? Words, parts of words and symbols get turned into tokens. It understands the statistical, statistical relationship between those tokens. And so when it gives you a response, what it's actually doing is it's basically coming out with a whole bunch of tokens and then flipping over the cards and those cards then turn into words. Right? So one of the things to be thinking about, right, it's looking for statistical relationships. So what, happen, what happens if a particular entry in a log file is the trigger to set something off within the LLM itself? I think that's going to be the interesting thing. And that's the interesting thing, again, with the, the, this world of technology, is there's so many firewall systems out there. There's so, much, there's so many modules out there. There's so much, there's so much technology. And so you, you could massively compromise the documentation about one specific facet of technology that only a, a certain relatively small number of people use and basically own those people if they try to use an LLM system to do whatever it is with your systems. So I think this is going to be kind of interesting and something to think about going forward uh, with these LLMs because it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. As I say, AI, AI is going to end in tears. It's going to end in so many tears. People, people just aren't thinking about it. Anyways, right? Uh, that's all I got to say. Put your thoughts. Put your thoughts down below. Uh, do remember I do these videos in order to support SiliconDojo.com. Uh, authority list, gatekeeper list, free to then use your hands-on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is you want to do. I'm here in American Underground at, in Durham uh, to, in order to teach a class on uh, AI computer vision tonight. I'm having more classes coming up. If you're interested, take a look at SiliconDojo.com to see what the schedule is. If you want to help support free to then use your education, there's a donor box link down below. And where, where are we at? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Well, I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. So I've, I've done four videos in under 50 minutes. 49 minutes, 30 seconds. I've done four videos. Four? Yeah, that's four. Ah, I'm feeling pretty good there. Yeah, I am using the timer now. I'm using the timer because, again, Silicon Dojo is actually doing pretty well. I've got this class tonight. We have a boot camp. So we have our first full day boot camp coming up in January. It looks like classes are going to be coming back to uh, Asheville pretty soon. So I'm going to be teaching a lot of classes. So although, although this helps pay for Silicon Dojo, I also can't waste a lot of time doing this anymore. Right? So I've got I've to make sure I spend no more, no more than two hours a day total all told, doing the video, encoding the video, creating the shitty thumbnails, all of that has to be less than two hours a day. That's why I've got that timer down there. And I'm feeling pretty good with the timer. Simply having a timer run surprisingly makes you just a little bit faster. Something, uh, something to think about when you go out there to do whatever it is you're going to do. Anyways, I do have some more stuff that I have to do to get prepared for class tonight. With that, see y'all later.